What's up everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. This is a special uh, episode, we're going to be looking at one of the most recent Progress Wrestling chapters, one of the most Progress Wrestling events, uh, Progress Chapter 77, Pumpkin Spice, filmed from the Electric Ballroom in Camden on the 28th of October. And uh, I've always been a, a bit of a fan of progress. So I've, I've kind of dipped in and out on occasions, but uh, have followed them on the whole. I do subscribe to uh, Progress On Demand through their website, which I highly recommend if you don't already do so. It's only about seven ninety nine per month, uh, where you get all of their previous back catalogue from all of their chapters, plus a lots of other independent wrestling groups uh, which have signed on to uh, be part of that. So it looked like uh, another sellout crowd in the audience for uh, chapter 77 pumpkin spice their special halloween show they tend to row run uh, one show every uh, four or five weeks so what i'll try to do is i will do a bit of a, a review of each of the shows whenever they become available on their on-demand service so the first match of the night is timothy thatcher versus William Eva. Now I'm not as familiar with uh, Eva as I am with Timothy Thatcher however Eva came to the ring uh, with his uh, comedy preacher type gimmick uh, which was a contrast to the no-nonsense hearted in Thatcher who uh, is of course stable mates with the Progress World Champion Walter. So uh, Eva uh, was replacing the injured Tyler Bates in this match. However, Eva should not be taken lightly as he was uh, previously a Progress World Champion uh, uh, for only one month, I think, from show to show uh, between June and July 2016. Taking the title off of Marty Skrull at the time, only to drop it back to him the very next match. Uh, Thatcher takes control in the early going within this match. Some good ground work and a single leg Boston Crab followed by a bow and arrow manoeuvre uh, for the two count. Eva turned an attempted double underhook into a back body uh, drop. A stiff lariat combo for the near fall. Eva having just come back from a leg injury himself made a quick comeback hitting a back body drop back body drop driver excuse me um, however Thatcher was never in any real trouble slapping on a Fujiwara armbar for the submission win in just under 10 minutes so a, a fairly entertaining match to kick off the show um, and uh, looks like a good win for Thatcher our next match is um, a women's match uh, not for the progress women's champion the champion uh, reigning champion is Ginny uh, not featured in a match on this card, um, but we may well see Ginny uh, in some form or another later on in the show. Um, this match, uh, uh, by the way, is Isla Dawn versus Millie McKenzie. So Isla um, is of course part, was of course part of the Mae Young Classic earlier this summer and is now part of the NXT UK roster. Um, she enters first. Uh, Isla Dawn's entrance uh, and music is fantastic pretty special uh, she should be a big player in the NXT TV show in the near future I've got a lot of time for, for Isla um, I think she's got a great attitude great personality some really good skills um, Miley McKenzie enters to a great reception from the progress faithful um, and a clear favorite for from the crowd Miley McKenzie was part of the progress women's championship match uh, in their last big show hello Wembley uh, versus Tony Storm and Ginny, the eventual winner in another standout match from that historic event. Isla takes control in the first uh, in the first two minutes of the match with some wicked kicks to uh, Miley, followed by a gory Guerrero special, uh, which Mackenzie did manage to escape from hitting Dawn with a uh, stunner uh, to take control. Mackenzie hits a big spear uh, from out of nowhere for only a two count. The match continues at a fast pace early on, with Mackenzie missing a dive from the top rope, allowing Dawn to hit a wicked knee strike and an impressive bridging half and half suplex for a close two count. Dawn follows this with a dragon clutch, which Mackenzie was able to escape by reaching the ropes. A lot of back and forth action with some very hard hitting and unique moves being used by both wrestlers. However, the match was stopped after around seven minutes after a run in attack from Ginny and Laura DiMatteo. 
However, after the vicious beatdown from Nina Samuels and Charlie Morgan ran out to beat down Ginny and De Matteo, uh, with Miley McKenzie and Isla Dawn getting rid of Ginny and De Matteo with a pair of suplexes as the two competitors shake hands in the middle of the ring before heading back to the locker room themselves. So a lot of outside interference there from Ginny and Laura De Matteo, who are obviously part of the stable. Uh, with uh, further interference by Nina Samuels and Charlie Morgan, who were previously associated with uh, Ginny and Di Matteo, um, to help clear the house there uh, before Mackenzie and Isla Dawn did the rest. So an entertaining match. I actually thought it was a very, very solid wrestling match uh, for what it was for the first six or seven minutes until the outside interference. It's a shame we couldn't get to a conclusive uh, winner there. I'd certainly like to see more from uh, Isla Dawn and Miley McKenzie in the future. Um, considering Miley is only 18 years old, uh, she is uh, experienced well beyond her years and already part of the NXT UK roster along with Isla Dawn. Next up, we've got Trent Seven uh, in an Atlas Division Championship match, and it's an open challenge. So the open challenge for the Atlas Division Championship was a gimmick uh, once played out by Rampage Brown. So when he was the Atlas Division Champion, he would do open challenges. Anyway, Seven enters to a very enthusiastic pop from the fans, um, who will all be defend, but who will be he be defending his championship against tonight? The Atlas Champion. Uh, is for wrestlers over the £205 mark, so no, no cruiserweights allowed. Gino Gambino makes his entrance, and he's definitely no cruiserweight. Gambino, in fact, is the MCW heavyweight champion. Uh, that's the Melbourne Championship uh, Wrestling a Heavyweight Champion, weighing in at over £300, and uh, he's by all accounts a 13-year veteran. They start with the match with uh, some heavy shoulder tackle exchanges, which uh, Gambino uh, wins every time, followed by six huge avalanche splashes into the corner from Gambino. Um, however, he does eventually run out of steam. Uh, as the match takes a, a small break for Gambino to try to uh, catch his breath, um, the referee tries to find an inhaler for Mr. Juicy, Gino Gambino. However, instead of using the inhaler on himself, Gambino uses it to spray Seven in the face. Lots of comedy spots in this match, and the crowd are enjoying every moment with Trent Seven, the firm favourite, as you would imagine. Trent Seven has to be one of the most prolific tag team wrestlers in recent histories, uh, being a former three-time Progress Tag Team Champion with British Strong Style and a mixture of Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne being his tag team partner uh, with Emma Tag Team Championship runs and, of course, a former NXT Tag Team Champion with Tyler Bates. But now he's trying to prove himself as a singles competitor, uh, with this being his first defence of the Atlas title, which he won by defeating and retiring Doug Williams at the Hello Wembley show in September. This was a, a very impressive, there was a very impressive top rope suplex from Trent Seven onto Gambino, which must have shifted the ring a good five inches. Uh, Gambino spiked Seven with a, a vicious looking power driver. However, Seven finished the match, uh, catching Gambino on the top rope, only to put him into Trent's burning hammer finisher for the one, two, three and successful def title defence. The first half of the match was all comedy and entertainment, however the second half uh, was definitely hard hitting and vicious. Uh, well done to Trent Seven and a nice progress introduction to Gino Gambino. I'm sure we'll see a bit more from him in the future. Next up uh, we've got a progress tag team title uh, match um, and it's a, a three-way match between the 198 with uh, Flash Morgan Webster and the Wild Boar Mike Hitchman versus the Grizzled Young Veterans. Of course, that's Zach Gibson and James Drake versus Aussie Open, the uh, new Progress Tag Team Champions. They won their, their, the title at uh, Wembley in September, and that is Carl Fletcher and Mark Davis. So a pretty cool entrance music, as a matter of fact, from the 198, who have both been a part of NXT UK since it started a month ago. Uh, they're followed by the grizzled young veterans, Zach Gibson and James Drake. The final team in the three-way match um, are the Aussie Open, and I mentioned they captured the tag team titles um, in September at Hello Wembley in the tag team Thunderbastard title match. 
After a bit of back and forth action, the grizzled young vet veterans take control with some ground work. Drake and Gibson manhandle Carl Fletcher. Uh, Fletcher finally manages to make the tag to Davis, um, who performs a stunning double body slam on both Webster and Hitchman. Aussie Open hits a double dive to the outside, followed by some great double team action for the two counts. In one of the more impressive spots of the match, all six men get involved in a Tower of Doom suplex on Flash Morgan Webster. At one stage of the match, Gibson and Drake have both members of the Aussie Open in a dual Shankly Gates until Davis managed to power out and slam Drake onto Gibson to break his hold on Fletcher and the submission attempt. Uh, Aussie Open uh, thought they had the match won, hitting their fidget spinner on the wild boar, only for the referee to pull, be pulled out of the ring by the grizzled young veterans uh, to stop the uh, count. While Drake and Gibson are arguing with the ref on the outside, Fletcher attempts a slingshot move on them both, only to be held by the arms of James Drake, allowing Gibson to attempt a, attempt a steel chair shot to Fletcher's head. However, Fletcher moved and Gibson uh, with Gibson hitting Drake full on with a steel chair headshot instead. Some fast paced double team action from the 198 leading to a close near fall. However, Aussie Open hit another fidget spinner on Webster, Webster for the three count to regain their championship for the first time in the first defence. Really good match. Took a little while to get going. Um, was a little bit disjointed in places. I did enjoy it and uh, Aussie Open is certainly building, um, you know, a good fan base with the the, the Progress Faithful, and uh, I look forward to seeing more from them in the future. They do have a, a strong tag division in Progress. Next, we see Eddie Dennis in the ring for an in-ring promo in his street clothes. It was uh, an impressive promo where he said that in January he tore his pectoral muscle, but showed up for every single show to remain relevant. Uh, he was the guy that in July he quit his job as a headmaster of a primary school to concentrate on his career as a wrestler. He was the guy in May who signed his WWE contract whilst wearing, wearing a sling. And he was the guy that, alongside his former best friend, sacrificed their health and career when he wrestled Mark Andrews at Hello Wembley and finally managed to break a table. He said that he didn't know if... Any Dennis was a good guy or whether Eddie Dennis was a bad guy, but he does know that he is going to be the Progress Wrestling's next world champion. Next we see Paul Robinson against Mark Andrews. So Paul Robinson put on a hardcore masterclass against uh, Jimmy Havoc at Hello Wembley. Paul Robinson was visibly shaken due to the blood loss and the pain that he was experiencing at the end of that match uh, with Havoc in September. Definitely go out of your way and uh, subscribe to Progress On Demand. Catch Hello Wembley. Watch that match. Um, if you're a little bit squeamish, then you might want to peek through your fingers or from behind a cushion, but definitely uh, a, a standout match from that particular show. This time he's up against another hero from Hello Wembley, Mark Andrews. Two completely contrasting styles. Robinson has a football hooligan uh, image, tough man uh, gimmick who thrives on the crowd heat and the hatred from the, the fans. Lots of clubbing blows from Robinson in the early stages. However, Andrews was able to turn a curb stomp into a power bomb to briefly gain the upper hand. So a very impressive spot there from Mark Andrews. Andrews is so smooth in the ring as he performs a somersault sent on and implant DDT on Robinson for a two count. Robin hits, uh, Robinson hits a reverse runner followed by a tornado kick onto Andrews. Both Men find their way onto the top turnbuckle, allowing Robinson to hit a stunning top rope spinning head scissors rana, followed by a curb stomp finisher for the three counts and the victory against Mark Andrews. Uh, this match was relatively quick with a more than impressive outing uh, from the much maligned Paul Robinson, showing that he can not only fight, but he can also wrestle and some good high flying spots from both men in this match. Very good indeed. <coughs> Next, we have the Progress Wrestling World Championship and number one contenders match. <coughs> so it's another three-way match where the winner will be going on to face the Progress World Champion at a future show. So the competitors in this match, you got Mark Haskins. Uh, he was accompanied to the ring by his wife, Vicky Haskins, versus Chris Brooks. 
one half of the tag team CCK versus Jimmy Havoc, the hardcore progress legend. Jimmy Havoc uh, is a former Progress World Champion where he won the championship in November 2013 and he held the championship for one year and eight months until he lost the title against Will Ospreay in July 2015. Haskins is another former Progress Champion when he won the championship in September 2016 in a three-way match against Tommy End, now Alistair Black in NXT, uh, and Marty Skrull. Haskins did manage to defend his championship against Zach Gibson at Chapter 37 and again against Marty Skrull and Jimmy Havoc in a three-way at Chapter 38. However, Haskins had to give up the championship soon after due to injury. Haskins and Havoc team up to start off against Brooks with both men being a, f being a former tag team with one another. This alliance didn't last for too long as they battered one another before Haskins got handed a barbed wire bat. Havoc, not wanting to be left out, was handed an axe. An axe of all things. Uh, yes, neither man were able to use the weapon of choice uh, just yet as Brooks gained some offence only to be double teamed again by Haskins and Havoc. On the outside this time, with a double kick to the head of Brooks while he was placed in his on a steel chair. Havoc eventually turned his back on Haskins and threw him into a pile of chairs before turning his attention to Brooks on the outside once again. Haskins regained control uh, of the match back in the ring where all three men battled it out. Havoc got a close three count, planting Havoc onto Brooks with a Death Valley driver. Uh, Brooks manages to put an octopus hold on both Havoc and Haskins at the same time, which is a very impressive spot in the match. Havoc is still uh, able to, is still able to hit a double Rainmaker clothesline on Haskins and Brooks before Drew Parker um, hits the ring to beat Havoc. Now Drew Parker, for those of you that did watch the pre-show to Hello Wembley, uh, was the winner of the pre-show Battle Royal at Hello Wembley in September. Uh, Jimmy Havoc appears to have been taken out of the match at this stage by Drew Parker, leaving Brooks and Haskins to trade moves back in the ring until Haskins is able to apply the sharpshooter on Chris Brooks in the middle of the ring for the submission victory. Um, a little bit of a disjointed match in my opinion. I think uh, multi-man matches, three or four person matches are not always the cleanest or tidiest of matches. Um, this one you know, did work at times. Um, I think it worked better when Haskins was taken out of the match and it just uh, uh, a final few minutes with Haskins and Brooke. Um, However, Haskins was the right man to win the match uh, and goes on to a future championship match against the winner of the main event. After the match, he does a, an in-ring promo saying that how uh, two years ago he was the Progress Champion before being told that he had, uh, had the neck of an 80-year-old and how he should hang up the boots and retire. Haskins said how he got a second, a third and a fourth opinion from other doctors and they all said that he was good to go. He said that he does it for his family and he does it for the fans and that he doesn't care who walks out to tonight's main event as a champion because Haskins is coming for the winner. So on to the main event, the ring general Walter, the champion, uh, comes to the ring uh, first. Um, his opponent is Zack Sabre Jr. Remember this is for the Progress Wrestling World Championship. Walter is an impressive figure standing six foot four, weighing over 300 pounds. Zack Sabre Jr. is introduced as a 2018 Super Strong Star winner and the best technical wrestler in the world. The crowd are really hot with uh, dueling charts for both Sabre Jr. and Walter um, as the match commences. Walter takes early control of the match with a side headlock. Uh, Walter is control of the match with his immense power, uh, keeping Sabre Jr. grounded until Sabre is able to escape to the outside to regain his thoughts. Sabre Jr. is able to reverse a Japanese stranglehold before tying Walter up on the ground, going to work with some joint manipulation on Walter's right arm. Sabre Jr. gets caught, up, uh, caught by a wicked right-hand slap, followed by a huge sleeper hold from Walter. Uh, Sabre and Walter are, being, are beating the hell out of one another at this stage, uh, with Walter putting some punishment on Sabre Jr.'s neck. 
Walter Drape Super Junior across the top turnbuckle before slapping his chest once again, causing him to fall out uh, uh, over the top um, and onto the hard wooden floor on the outside. Sabre is able to take advantage finally with a series of stiff kicks to Walter, followed by a massive penalty kick uh, to Walter's chest. Zack Sabre Jr. appears to be gaining energy while Walter appears to be getting slower until Walter catches Sabre with an almighty chest slap. Um, a series of stiff blows and slaps between the two were exchanged uh, and are sometimes hard to watch. Walter puts Sabre Jr. into a Boston Crab before transitioning into an STF. Sabre tries to counter with repeated blows to Walter's left arm. Some strong throws by Walter leads uh, to a two count. Uh, both guys are breathing heavy at this stage with Walter's forearms and wrists feeling the punishment from Sabre Jr.'s repeated kicks and punches. Sabre reverses a powerbomb attempt into a guillotine. However, Walter is able to turn the move into a legit tombstone pile driver causing serious harm to Sabre Jr.'s already injured neck. Three of the most awesome chest slaps are followed by two knee lifts to Sabre Jr. But somehow, Zack Sabre Jr. is able to overcome those awesome, awesome chest slaps and knee strikes to apply a double arm lock in the centre of the ring. Uh, Walter is just able to reach the ropes for the escape. Uh, this match um, is as hard a hitting as any match you are likely to see. Uh, Sabre Jr. survives a massive power bond pinning attempt from Walter. Uh, the two... Uh, the finish comes when Walter hits a huge clothesline and a Hay of Thunder finisher for the three count and the win to regain his Progress World Championship. As mentioned, this was a hard-hitting and sometimes hard-to-watch match uh, that you have to go out of your way to see. Uh, there was no playing around from either of these two, and I will remember this match between Zack Sabre Jr. and Walter for many, many years to come for its hard-hitting and strong style action. This was another excellent wrestling show from one of the premier independent wrestling companies on the planet. Um, some of the standout moments for me, I really enjoyed the match between uh, Miley McKenzie and Isla Dawn. That's an excellent wrestling action. Uh, they absolutely took it to the max with some of the moves and some of the action and the storytelling. Uh, some moves that I hadn't seen uh, used for a long time, um, including the uh, Gory Guerrero special. Very, very good. Shame there was outside interference uh, to end the match. But I'm sure they'll uh, have another encounter, possibly involving uh, Ginny and uh, the others that interfered at the end of the match. I quite enjoyed the Trent Seven versus uh, Gino Gambino match. A uh, bit of a comedy fest <laughs> for the first half, uh, but then it settled into a very hard-hitting, uh, excellent um, wrestling match to finish off. The true highlight for me, though, was the main event. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. versus the Progress World Champion, uh, the Ring General Walter. Uh, the match lasted about 20 minutes. It was non-stop, hard-hitting action. Um, to watch it sometimes, the slaps, the blows, um, some of the joint manipulation from Zack Sabre Jr. Um, it, it, it was end-to-end -end action. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, some really, really good um, hard-hitting stuff in the middle of that ring between those two. Two completely contrasting styles. Um, and Zack Sabre Jr. Um, did manage to rattle Walter on quite a few occasions. Both men were breathing heavy towards the end, uh, but they managed to find uh, extra energy um, to finish the match off with as much pace as it started. Um, I'd definitely give this match a good... Uh, let's see, four, four and a quarter stars out of five if I were to rate it. Um, and uh, I'd say an excellent, excellent match that I would definitely go out, of my, go out of my way to watch again in the very near future. And I highly recommend that you do too. Um, as I said earlier, I, I recommend that you sign up to uh, the Progress On Demand uh, through the website. It's only seven ninety nine per month to watch one of the main reasons why British independent wrestling is as respected as it is at the moment worldwide. Uh, I'll aim to review future Progress Wrestling shows as they happen, so keep listening to Wrestling Pajamas for your Progress Wrestling updates. Um, if you have any questions about the show, about this show in particular, or any questions you'd like to ask, 
any feedback or any suggestions for things that you'd like me to review in the future, uh, just email me at wrestlingwithjohners at gmail.com. You can also get in touch via our Twitter page, which is at withjohners underscore WWJ. Or visit uh, my YouTube page, uh, Johnners Wrestling, where you can see um, my uh, videos from my trip to New Orleans earlier on this year for WrestleMania 34. And also where you can um, hear this podcast um, on my YouTube channel. Thanks again for listening and stay tuned to Wrestling with Johnners for all of your NXT UK and NXT action from Full Sail updates. Uh, so uh, take care and we'll see you all soon.